Background. I graduated from college four years ago and live at home with my parents. My sister graduated two years ago and also lives with my parents. We both got jobs pretty much straight out of college. I pay my parents $800 a month in rent since my first paycheck. This is a throwaway and it's still fresh and I'm really emotionally charged right now. Last night my parents were talking loudly about their financial problems in the living room. I overheard and I offered to help by paying more in rent, I was thinking $901,000 since it covers utilities phone internet. My parents were grateful. Now, prior to this, I never asked how much my sister pays in rent. I always figured my parents charged us the same. So absentmindedly I asked a follow-up question. Me. How much is my sister paying for rent? My mom. Nothing. A very long pause. Me. What do you mean she doesn't pay rent? My dad, visibly angry. Your sister doesn't pay a thing. My dad explained how my sister recently bought a brand new car and hasn't paid insurance on it, so my dad had to pay for it. She doesn't pay rent. She doesn't pay utilities phone anything. So for the past two years she's been living rent-free while I've been paying my parents. So later that night we had a family sit-down talk. My sister didn't want to pay rent, especially at how much I was paying. She offered $100. My parents suggested she pay $300, I pay $800, which my sister and I both rejected. The conversation ended with this. Sister. I'm trying to live my life. These were her exact words which pissed me to holy hell. So my sister storms off to her room and it's now me and my parents in the living room. I'm extremely upset at this because it's massively unfair. My mom is upset that everyone's angry at each other, and my dad's angry my sister won't parent, and she won't move out, and both my parents don't want to police involved. So I say my part before leaving. Me. I'm not going to pay any more rent until she does. It's only fair right. And if I do parent, I pay whatever she's being. My mom. What if she pays $300 and you pay $800? Me. No. My mom. But, we really need the money me. That's too bad. I get up and go off to my room. So this morning my dad comes in and tells me that I'm the idiot for not paying rent. That I should pay rent because it's the right thing to do and all this crap. I'm like. What the hell. Make, my sister, pay rent. My mom, who's listening in. You've seen her. She won't listen to us. Me. Well that's too bad. My mom, really angry. Well we wouldn't have this problem if you didn't try to make your sister pay rent. That was the last straw that blew it for me. I slammed the door on my parents. Now my parents are in the living room discussing how both their children are rotten and how it was better back in the home country back in their day when kids listened to their parents. Not the idiot. You've paid about $19,000 in rent while your sister has paid nothing. Oh hell no. Your parents are being ridiculous and your sister is the idiot. How financially difficult would it be for you to leave? I wouldn't want to stay with them if it was me. Added. People keep pointing out that OP has paid roughly $38,000 in the last four years. It isn't that I can't do maths, I was making the point that OP paid $19,000, well the sister has lived there for free over the last two years. OP was willing to up their payments to 1k a month to help out financially, obviously that was before finding out the increase probably is going toward subsidizing her sister's new car insurance. That'll get you a one-bedroom or a studio apartment quite handy, unless you're looking for something in the heart of downtown New York or Toronto. Everyone is the idiot here. Move out. Get a roommate if you can't afford it on your own. For those asking why he's, she's. An idiot too. Because if he can pay up to $1,000 a month for rent and has throwing a fit like this, then he needs to grow the hell up and move out. Yay it's not fair, but stops complaining and take action. The parents and sister are obviously more idiots than OP, but he's not innocent in this either. My mother is in prison for defrauding the government for 10 plus years, which finally caught up with her. About two years ago, I was subpoenaed by the court to testify and ended up being the testimonial that ultimately sent her to federal prison. She has been in prison for just over a year now. As a result, we are estranged. However, I wasn't given much of a choice because my current profession has strict legal requirements that I can't risk bending or I'll lose everything. 
Fast forward to this past week, my maternal grandfather passed away suddenly from complications from a stroke he had two months ago. Everyone is sad and devastated, and it's been hard to reconcile the loss during COVID-19. A lot of prisons will grant furlough for those who wish to attend their loved one's funeral, something we already had to do back in February when my grandmother passed away. And I was the one who filled out the paperwork and was 100% responsible for my mother during her furlough. So once I received news of my grandfather's passing, I started on the paperwork but stopped because it turned out that my grandfather is going straight to cremation without a funeral or service, because that is what my grandfather wanted. And I told my family that we weren't furloughing my mother out because of the fact there is no service or funeral. My family understood. Fast forward to today, when my sibling calls me to thank me for furloughing our mom out. Shocked and confused, I ask the obvious, what do you mean? Turns out, as I discovered by calling the prison, that my aunt busted my mother out of prison on falsified documents where they forged my signature and gave my contact information. And told the prison that there was a funeral and that my mother's presence was required. 1. I live in a separate province. 2. There isn't a funeral or service, there is absolutely no reason for her to be outside of prison during a pandemic. Especially when prisons are COVID-19 hotspots. So I had to call the police because if caught, I could lose my livelihood, my license, and a career I love. After all, my mother didn't want to grieve in prison and had zero regards for anyone else's health and well-being. I texted everyone in my family to encourage my aunt to my mother back to prison or I would have no choice but to call the police and charge my aunt with identity theft and have a warrant issued for my mother. Something I really don't want to do. However, my family is calling me an insensitive idiot for not allowing the family to get together to grieve because I can't be there and I'm taking it out on them. So I called my aunt directly, recorded the call, and told her if she didn't return my mother to prison by noon tomorrow, I would call the police and have them issue a warrant for my mother and have her charged with identity theft. Am I the idiot for not allowing my family for using me to basically prison break my mother? Not the idiot. Please stop giving these people chances. Call the police, report the identity theft and let the cops go after whoever. This is not your fault and the longer you hesitate and give chances and worry you're the idiot, the more likely it is that this will ruin your life. Not the idiot. But call the police prison now and report it. Without the prison knowing what happened what will stop them from doing something similar again and just telling everyone not to tell you. Don't risk it. Not the idiot and you should turn your aunt in, regardless. She stole your identity, forged your signature, and potentially mixed your name up in a prisoner escape. No way. She should be sharing a cell with your mother. A bunch of people from my department at work went for drinks on Friday after work. Everyone was having a good time and there were about 20 of us there, from about 30 people in our department. I go to the bathroom and as I am about to exit the hall to the bathroom, I hear my co-worker say my name from around the corner of the wall. Perhaps I shouldn't have eavesdropped, but curiosity suspicion got the best of me and I did. I overheard a conversation between three guys in my department making a hot list, they actually referred to it as that, which involved ranking every woman in the department from first to last. I was upset and disturbed. I was quite friendly with two-thirds of the guys, actually. Yesterday morning I tell HR and they state that they have a zero-tolerance policy for actions like this. All three men were fired first thing this morning, and now I feel terrible. I hated the way they were talking about women, but I didn't think they should be fired. With that said, we work for a large company that I know takes complaints like this seriously and would not really miss these three guys, so deep down, I suppose I knew it was a possibility when I complained. Nobody knows that I am the person who reported them and I've overheard people say that the person is a snitch. I'm wondering if I should have just confronted them at the bar and told them how it made me feel instead, but at the time I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I especially feel bad because I had a fairly good relationship with two of the guys. Am I the idiot? Info 1. It was not a formal work event, but our supervisor organized everyone to go out for drinks. Info 2. A lot of people are insisting that I am upset because I was low on the list. I tried to avoid making this the focus, but with all the comments I feel like I have to address it. I was high on the list and was not offended about my placement, I was offended about the fact that they were making a list in the first place. I hate that I even have to write this.
not the idiot. This constitutes a hostile work environment even if it took place outside of the office. Not the idiot. Maybe if more men get fired for doing stupid crap like that, then they'll stop sexualizing their coworkers and behaving inappropriately in the office. Not the idiot. It wasn't your actions that got them fired, it was their actions that got them fired. Until people realize how offensive and damaging treating women as objects is, it will continue to be an issue in the workforce. Not the idiot. This is the type of thing that should go through HR. If you confronted it directly the reaction could have been retaliation of some sort. I don't necessarily agree that they should be fired either, but that's not your call to make. So my wife Liz and I have been married for seven years. We have preschool age kids and because we currently live in the same city as my parents. Mom would take the kids while my wife and I work. Liz is the one with a much larger income, she got an even better job opportunity that is requiring us to move to another city. I agreed since I could easily find a job in my field in the city we were moving to, but after my family heard we were selling the house to move, hell broke loose. Sunday, mom and Liz got into a huge fight because Liz told mom we'll move away and hire a babysitter for the kids, so she's no longer needed. Mom said she doesn't want her grandkids moving away and even said we should let the kids live at her house while we move. Liz laughed at her and mom lost it, basically saying that Liz was an ungrateful witch and that her grandkids moving will only happen over her dead body. They began exchanging harsher words and Liz snapped and told mom to butt out of private matters that don't concern her and said that she had no right to decide things regarding the kids. Mom firmly told her she was dead wrong and proceeded to tell her that she, as an involved grandmother, knows her rights and she would be taking Liz and me to court to ensure she still gets to see her grandkids. Liz was in shock, she looked to the left and saw me sitting there not saying or doing anything. She told me to check my mom, but I told her she was being unfair to mom and that mom had to feel upset because she will no longer be able to see her grandchildren. I honestly told Liz that she was a bit selfish to not consider my mom's feelings and her crucial presence in the kid's life first. Liz started arguing with me saying she couldn't believe I didn't stand behind her and defend her after hearing mom saying she'd get the court involved. I said mom was upset and cannot be blamed for her reaction. Liz started yelling at me calling me unsupportive and an enabler, then went home with the kids, insisting my family is my problem and I should handle it, although this whole moving thing was her idea. The situation hasn't been resolved and Liz and mom are getting more intense in their fights. I choose to stay out of it because both have valid arguments, but Liz has called me awful for not siding with her after seeing how mom spoke to her and being okay with the fact that mom was willing to cause us issues in court. Am I the idiot? I get that Liz wants my support, but I feel like mom has been punished through no fault of her own after being a loving grandmother to my kids. You're the idiot. Your mom threatened to take your family to court so she can get custody of the kids, she wants them to live with her. That is a disproportionate reaction to being told that someone is moving. Are you okay with moving to a new city? Sounds like you are. Why would you ever let anyone threaten your wife with the court for doing something incredibly beneficial for your family? Why would you let someone threaten you instead of offering to get on a plane to see you? You're the idiot. Your mom is threatening your family. And she could very well actually gain custody of the kids, depending on how much and how long she takes care of them. Omg, um, you're the idiot OP. Your wife and children should be your first priority always, not your mother's feelings about moving. It may have been your wife's idea, but you agreed to it. If you had an issue with moving, you should have had that conversation with your wife. Agreeing with it to your wife's face and then letting your mom do the dirty work of fighting her about it is cowardly and passive-aggressive. The fact that you are continuing to sit there like a bump on a log while your relatives harass your wife is failing hardcore as a spouse. Get your mother out of your marriage or you won't have a marriage. You're the idiot.